I'm sitting here watching her. I've been sitting here watching her non-stop for the past two weeks, I think. It honestly feels that I haven't slept, really. I've spent days and nights on the couch looking at her and when the times between blinking become shorter and shorter, my eyes do close and I doze off and then I wake up and watch her again. I generally love watching my dogs, always. My cats too, but mainly my dogs. And they watch me back. We generally do a lot of looking and watching of each other in this house. Kind of like making sure that everyone is in place at all times and then we go off and do what we were going to do anyway. But her, especially her, I have been watching her longer than anyone else. She's my first dog. Ten years of watching we've been doing to each other. That's a lot. She is always there. For ten years, she's always been there. So much so that I simply cannot grasp the idea that one day I will look and she won't be there anymore. I just... I just never thought that this is possible. Never. But she is almost thirteen. In the past six months, she has had medical issues. For the first time in her life, really. One day she went from being fine to not knowing what to cope with first and how to cope with it. Her body started protesting, screaming, I'm old, in all caps lock and exclamation marks. Despite my denial and my foolish belief that whatever it is that she's been dealing with, kidneys, a spinal stroke, some issues with her stomach, etc., she can't get over it and she can't go back to being the normal her I always knew. I kind of know by now that she's uh, she's not going back to exactly who she was and the one thing about her that hasn't changed the one thing that makes her be her every day is all the sleeping positions she takes in her bed <laughs> beds she loves her beds she slept a lot this dog in her life maybe that's what got her this far all this sleeping she's done for a decade so I've been doing a lot of looking at her lately, more than usual. I look at her usually from the couch where I have a side visual of her bed or from the kitchen table slash my desk where I have a front visual. With every new visit to a vet and every new medical issue she has, there's a new shaved patch on her body. And my watching also includes observing day in, day out, how the hair on those shaved patches is growing back. Dog hair takes a long time to grow, damn it. Honestly, sometimes it takes months. And for every patch that's finally covered in hair, new ones appear from new blood tests and ultrasounds. When will all her hair grow back on all of her body? Ugh, whatever. While watching her from the couch this afternoon, I dozed off. I dreamt about her. I had her at home and I wasn't happy with her condition. She just didn't seem right and I had to fix it and since no one else would, I decided to do it myself. I decided to separate her upper legs from her lower body. Before you freak out, in my dream, dogs would have two-story bodies, so eight legs. A lower body with legs that touch the floor and an upper body with legs attached to the lower body. <laughs> and I separated the upper legs from the lower body because they were wobbly. And as I was trying to stitch them back properly, I kept failing and in an embarrassment and panic haze, I rang the vet to come finish the job because she was starting to wake up and I had screwed up and jeez, that's when I woke myself up completely disorientated and freaked out. I'm crazy. I'm not crazy. I'm just that one human in her life who she looks at when she's not feeling well. That one human in her life who she looks at as if she's saying, fix it, mommy. I'm in pain. I'm uncomfortable. I feel funny. I'm hot. I'm cold. I'm tired. Fix it. You know how to fix it. 
I'm the one she trusts into fixing everything that bothers her. The room temperature, the lighting, the noises. I'm the one who keeps her bed clean and comfy. I'm the one who knows her bladder clock and takes her out in time. I'm the one who presents the food, the water. I'm the one that's keeping her alive and cozy and well. I'm the fixer in her life. That dream was all about exploring the extent of my abilities to fix everything when it comes to her. About realizing that I can't fix everything. Not all the time. And that's when the dream turned into a nightmare. When I realized I couldn't fix her. These last two weeks have been rough. She was doing okay. More than okay, actually. For a couple of months, we would take our walks every evening, she would eat, play. One day, a month ago, she woke up and she was limping. She just needs to stretch her legs, I thought. She had been sleeping in the same position for hours. But she stretched her legs and the limp was still there. No pain, no nothing, just a limp. A couple of days later, as it didn't seem to get better, I took her to the orthopedic and he concluded that there was nothing wrong with her because, of course, just like when your car makes a funny noise but when you take it to the mechanic it just doesn't make that noise for those 10 minutes that you're there, well, dogs do the same thing, apparently. <laughs> they limp and you freak out and then you take them to the vet and then they just won't limp in front of the vet and that's that. <laughs> I did show him a video though and he said that it's probably her hip. At that age, a sore hip and some arthritis is pretty normal, I thought. The limp appeared again the next day and then for a week it disappeared. Funny that it disappeared while we were at my hometown where she goes out and loses herself for an hour among the sheep and other animal smells that she loves. <laughs> But then the limp came back and then it disappeared again and then we went to more vets and a chiropractor and another vet and then one day she was limping differently and the same night she couldn't even put any weight on her hind leg and then we rushed to the orthopedic again the next day and she had ligament damage which is really unfair because this dog does not jump, does not run, she does not go up and down stairs, she's been so protected and I have been doing everything right so that she never, ever, never has the potential of developing any kind of damage to her bones or joints or whatever. Ugh. Surgery and especially an orthopedic surgery at that age for this dog with her kidneys kind of failing and her heart being, well, an old heart is, as I was told, probably out of the question. So we were sent home and given some painkillers and as the night progressed she started being more and more heavy on her feet to the point where the next morning she didn't even have the strength to get off her bed. She didn't even have the strength to sit up using only her two front legs. Ligament damage in both hind legs was the new diagnosis as we rushed to the vet yet again the next day, which means what? <laughs> what exactly? And how is this possible? Will someone tell me how the f*** did this happen? When she was just doing fine, and why didn't I see it coming since she had been limping for a good three weeks, but there didn't seem to be anything very worrying, supposedly, what the f***? And with one vet saying one thing and the other vet saying another thing and among painkillers that apparently don't work and home remedies I came up with based on instinct, Google and my observing skills, I spent the entire first week sleeping on the couch, being her nurse, her mom, her vet, her life coach, her confidence boost and her fixer, as always. Although this time I just couldn't fix everything. I couldn't. I went into dilemmas that nearly drove me nuts. If she can't even get up to go from her bed to the water bowl, if she can't even crawl using her front legs like the paraplegic dogs do, what's the point of, I mean, maybe surgery, even if it's gonna be tough on her, is the option. But surgery where? Which leg? Both? Right now, she seems unable to use any of her four legs, so what? What the f***? What? It's been, it's been rough. 
I'm not gonna go into many medical details because that's not the point. After one whole week, seven long days where she would go from acting like a quadriplegic dog to wobbling a bit around the house, then going back to being quadriplegic. After many trips to vets, tests, ultrasounds, x-rays and different medication, she more or less recovered, as much as she can recover given that she has basically two damaged hind legs. She eats, she plays, she gets up to pee whenever and wherever she feels like it. She trots from the bedroom to the front room and of course she gets a good girl Laura every single time she marks yet another rug. <laughs> because I could care less about the rugs or the apartment or the smell or anything other than her. And we've found a vet that made her feel better and that made me smile the other day. <laughs> and I keep smiling until now. I call my new smile the frown smile because it's got a cloud of sadness all over it. I have an elderly dog. I can say that out loud now. She grew old overnight six months ago and my mood these last six months is proportional to her mood, her well-being, her health. She's down, I'm down. I'm very down. She's better. I'm up. High. I feel high when she's feeling better. And my high is so high, while my low is so low that to someone who doesn't understand how important this dog's well-being is for my well-being, my mood swings would appear as if I'm... <laughs> well, maybe I am. Depressed. I'm losing it. I'm losing control. That's what that horrible dream I had was about. Control. That's what the staring at her 24-7 is about. That's what this video is about. The fact that I'm losing control and I'm trying desperately to take it back. To take back the control of her life, of her body. When it comes to our dogs, we have the control, we're the fixers. It's hot, you turn the air condition on, it's cold, you turn the heating on, you cover them with a blanket, you let them snooze next to you. They're hungry, you feed them, they're thirsty, you provide the water, they need to lay off steam, you walk them, you play with them, you train them to do the silliest things. You groom them, you know when they need to have their nails down, their ears clean, their vaccines, their spotums, their deworming pills. You know when they need to sleep, when they're tired already and when they can't have enough. You know when to stop them when it's getting too much or too dangerous. You know when to push them when you know they can make it. You know everything and you control everything. And as the years go by, you learn more and more. And the more you learn, the more you can control. That's why our dogs look at us. They look at us when they're in need when they're uncomfortable, when they're not well. They look at us because we are the ones who will fix things. And that's why she was looking back at me during that horrible week when she couldn't walk. And that's why when the looking didn't help, she would bark and bark and bark, trying to tell me what she needed, trying to tell me that she was hungry, that she needed to go out, that she was thirsty. It was time to turn the lights off and go to bed. And 99% of the times I knew what her staring at me was about and what her barking was about. And I would fix it. And every time I did, it was yet another proof in her mind that I can indeed fix everything. After years of gathering all that knowledge about our dogs from all the little things that happen, after years of being in control, towards the end, you feel invincible. You actually feel that you have the ultimate control. You feel like God. There's nothing you cannot predict, prevent, or fix when it comes to your dog. Nothing. And right at that moment, at the moment when you think you have the ultimate control, that's when you lose it. And you try your best to gain it back. You can't give up. You try your best to make sure that it's you who has the control. And every time a treatment goes well, every time you're going through a good month, 
You feel as if it was you who made it happen, your decisions, your controlling of the situation. And that may be the case once, twice, but at some point it starts not being the case. There are certain things that you cannot have control over. And as they're getting older, these things that you don't have any control over are getting more and more. And you feel defeated and betrayed and lost. So lost, so helpless. I am the one that is supposed to help her and I feel helpless myself completely helpless. No wonder I'm sinking into depression every time she's not doing well despite everything I'm doing for her. Damn it. It's been three times so far in these past six months that I felt that loss of control, but this last one, this last one was tough. It's lasted longer. I came close to realizing what the ultimate loss of control is. Death, her death, or even worse, her dying. What will my decisions have to be then, and what will they depend on? How long do you wait until she recovers, or doesn't? Who do you trust to tell you that she will recover, or that she won't? How do you control her final moments, making sure that you are doing the best for her, making sure that you're being kind to her, even if that means being unkind to yourself. In my darkest hour, as I was watching her one night struggling to get off her bed, unable to use any of her four legs, the terror overwhelmed me. The terror of not knowing whether I will be able to recognize the point of no return or whether I will miss it. And that was terrifying. I was holding her in my arms, in her favorite position, and I didn't know what to make of the moment. Was this what one of her last moments of comfort will look like, or not? Will she have last moments of comfort, or won't she? Now that she's more or less recovered, and that I'm high again, I'm trying to look at this past week from a distance to realize what was it all about, what I learned from it. I mean, apart from the fact that losing her will hurt more than anything can ever hurt in the world. And I guess what I learned was that the more moments like these we go through together, the more prepared I can be for the final moment. Every one of those three times so far that she came dangerously close to what I'm afraid of the most helped me be better prepared for the next one, and the next one, and the next one. It helped me control my feelings of losing control. It helped me realize that I will keep trying until the end to control everything about her. I will keep trying to fix everything and when this time comes that I won't be able to fix anything anymore, I will try my best to control the way she dies. When my other dog Apollo was lost for two days a few months ago, I came very close to paranoia. That was the most afraid I have ever been of my mental state. I was roaming the streets for hours, day and night, screaming his name, and when I didn't scream, I would sing to him, and although he couldn't hear me calling his name, I was sure somehow that he could hear me singing to him. I would sing the mockingbird, whisper it, basically, the lullaby, over and over again. And I find myself singing it now, again. I wondered what is it that made me go back to that song and I realized that just like when Apollo was gone and I had no idea where he was, now I am again in a situation where I am not in control. I don't know what to do, I don't know what's going to happen next, but I need to know and I need to be able to fix whatever is happening and whatever is going to happen. That's what moms do. They fix. 
they control, they make better. When you're lost, you're sitting there waiting for them to come get you. When you're sick, you're expecting them to make you feel better. If one remedy won't work, mom has to find another and another. She needs to keep coming up with new things that will work for you, things that will help you, things that will fix you, save you. Gosh, little baby, That's what the mockingbird's about. For everything that doesn't work, mom has to find another that does, and another, and another. She needs to keep trying, to keep fixing, to keep keeping you happy, keeping you healthy, keeping you alive, to keep controlling. She needs you to know that she will keep trying and that she will always be able to come up with a solution. And when she's tried everything and nothing works, she still has control over one thing, of how important you are, how loved, how special. Because you're the sweetest little baby in town. And if that cart and bull turn over, Mama's gonna buy you a dog named Rover. And if that dog named Rover don't bark, Mama's gonna buy you a horse and cart. And if that horse and cart turn round, you'll still be the sweetest little baby in town. <laughs>